We're going here with Dean Frost uh, after a disappointing defeat to Gateshead. Um, it, similar, similar tower in many ways of many games this season. Um, won and lost just before half time. Disappointed to go in at a, a, a goal down, was you? Yeah, absolutely. I think we've sort of uh, we were the, the team on the front foot sec uh, first half. Um, the side that looked more pressing to, to get a goal. I think we we, we maybe run their two centre halves into areas they didn't want to go into and um, they had to de defend a little bit desperately at times. And yeah, I think we were the better side first half. Um, again, a bit similar to I think Wrexham at home. Maybe older shot a little bit. Um, we've been the better side. Um, I think the vulnerability comes from a bit of the ang anxiety from the the the, the, the 22 game run where we haven't won I think that there's a lot of anxiety a little bit of nervousness and when you when you're dominating you're sort of half waiting for, to, for us to, we, we need to score but half waiting for them to have one chance and you can again see that the the uh, the, the wind is sucked out of our sails yeah I think I think it was a very good performance first half um, I think it was quite quite controlled it was quite bright we just you know just missed a couple of little passes with you know maybe a a t end of a toe that they've sort of intercepted, and I think we look very, very bright. So, but you know, 43 minutes, they get a free kick, poor free kick, give away, give away too many, too sloppy, uh, sloppy uh, free kicks we give away. We, we're vulnerable to set pieces, and um, you know, we haven't marked properly enough, uh, well enough, and um, they score. What do you? It, it, obviously, we spoke about sort of a, a lack of quality, a lack of experience. W what's the more bigger factor out of the two with the squad at the moment is it there's too much of a lack of experience or is there a, a, a lack of quality that's over overshadowing our performances um, I think I think a bit of experience I think if you see they go one to up second half although I don't think they dominated they, they had a bit more control they was they knew when to slow throws down they had a couple of older heads in well a lot of older heads in their side they just looked like they then they gained a bit of control of the game so Maybe an element of experience, a, bit, uh, a little bit maybe more quality. Um, but I, I, I've just said in another interview, if we're, we weren't on that run that we're, or the run we're on now, I don't think we'd be so anxious. And you know, like if we've just won, lost two on the bounce, or you know, have a, have a cut of wins, cut of draws, and cut of losses, I, I don't think we'd be so anxious. I think we, we sort of an element is. We, we, we clearly need to take chances when we're in top and in, in, on top to take that little bit of pressure off the back four. I don't think up to that moment, I don't think Marek had anything to do for 43 minutes, absolutely nothing to do. And then we have to defend, you know, and it is, a, it, I'm saying to Ash, this is an horrible area to defend, you know, they've got big men, bigger men than us. And um, so element, I think combination of experience, combination of us being more clinical, having goal scorers, uh, you know, more than just one or two goal scorers aside, we all need to weigh in. And um, yeah, being a bit more uh, uh, what's the word? Dis uh, discipline, maybe more focused, con uh, more concentrated when we're defending. Uh, but I, th I think a lot of it all comes from anxiety and a little bit of nervousness just from the run. You mentioned the turning point was obviously the goal on half time. I felt as well there was a turning point in the second half. Michael Bakari burst for on goal. Only got the key yeah, to defeat. He scores that. It's a different abso game. Absolutely, I think it was a very flat sort of second. We, they they got, got Pendus in the corner in the first five minutes, so it made it very flat. They slowed the game down. They took the throws quite a, a slow pace, which you expect them to do, and, I, and that's what we would do as well. And then um, yeah, we we finally break, and I, I think we had a good half hour left. We have had a half hour left. If Michael puts that away, then we can have a right good go at them. Um, again, once again, it proves that we. Um, don't put the chance away. It proves costly. Um, just said in there in the end as well. I think our performance collapsed a little bit because today you were very, very clear. We had four or five individuals trying to win, the, uh, trying to get us back in the game today, which I'm not pleased about. Um, yeah, we, 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 we get back into the game as a team and not as individuals. And I think we had too many individuals today. Part of your road was flat today as well. The crowd were quite flat. Um, did that disappoint you in any way? Because obviously, although we are uh, where we I are, think it's been pretty flat since I've come back. To be honest, I think it, it, it gets lifted when there's chances, mm. or there's a couple of block tackles, or a couple of last tick tackles, or a couple of shots. We have to play our part on the pitch to get the crowd going. I think we did it against Cheltenham. Probably Cheltenham was a bet the best sort of atmosphere in the stand where we were sort of 
uh, flying into tackles, we broke a couple of times, had some chances. I think we, we have to play our part in lifting the, the, the ground. It's not just to, you know, it's quite an open ground. I don't always think there's been ever been a like a fan, and I'm not. That's not a criticism of fans. It's just open. Um, you get you know 200 behind the goal, and then the rest is in the stands. It's um, yeah, I, I, you know, and the wind. I think wind takes a lot of uh, yeah, uh, yeah. atmosphere away from grounds. Um, but yeah, it's down to us to um, to lift the crowd as as well as the crowd lift us. Looking at the results today, we dropped to 10 points um, from safety. So obviously the situation is is is, is becoming increasingly um, severe. Um, I've asked you this before, but I'll ask you again: How are you approaching the next sort of six, six, seven games of the look, season? I just take each game as it comes. Look, I, I, I haven't really looked at other, you know, because at the end of the day, I need to get that right in the dressing room as opposed to worry about what other teams do. Um, if we win a couple of games, then I'd have a look. But there's no point until we win, or and, you know. And I think the, input, the performances have improved in the last four or five games steadily. Um, um, but yeah, all you can do is, you know, try and make training fun, enjoyable, make you know people want to come to work in the morning, um, and um, yeah, just really just focus on the next game. Um, what, what I can't focus on what's happening at the end of April. All I can focus on is all I can affect is you know right, right now this interview. But you know, as a manager, the next game and how we. Uh, we try and bounce back, lift ourselves up, and go again for the next game. Uh, squad wise, obviously, you've been looking to um, get some numbers numbers out. And Vidal, Xavier Vidal, went out on loan to Hemel Hempstead this week. Yep. Um, is there any more that you're looking to, to sort of get out on loan? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue with the, the money. I think there's a there's a there's a shortfall, so that's one of the reasons that he's trying to get a, a few players to, to go and play. I think it's a, a waste for people. You know, if two or three come back next week, which could be potentially the case, then I'm going to have three sitting in the stand. They might as well go and play football somewhere. Um, and secondly, yeah, the club needs to recoup some money. It's um, uh, yeah, over, it's over budget and um, uh, yeah, th things are quite tough, you know, um, in terms of, you know, I can't see there being anyone being brought in. We've got what we've got. Um, but if there's two or three in the stand, they probably, one or two will probably have to go and Play. You mentioned some might be back for next week. Um, how's the likes of Harry, uh, Harry Lee, Sam Cole? Harry Lee's a bit longer, probably is a bit more complicated with his uh, ankle in issue, uh, like issue with his ankle. So it's more complicated than just a, t a roll of his ankle. It's, a, uh, it's a, a, a ligament that's deep in the ankle, so it'll take a bit longer. Um, hopefully, Corney, George Porter, and Harry Osborne will be training as of some part of next week. So I think Corney could be back for Easter, and uh, Harry Osborne. Back. He, tr he hurt part, took part yesterday. So six players, up to six players, out injured. That's not helped you at all either, is it? No. Uh, yeah. Well, um, it, no. Of course it hasn't. But you know, whether whether that. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe one or two are quite crucial in terms of especially going forward. But you know, it is what it is. Um, two or three of them were injured before I got here, and then another two injured since I've been here. So. Um, Part of the game of football, yeah, not that you can do, but well, I say I can play, play a part in it because I can prevent uh, certain injuries in training and whatever. But um, I think uh, some of them have been out of my hands. Easter uh, next weekend, so Good Friday, you're away easily home to our good friends from Woking. What's your uh, what's your aspirations for Easter? Well, just go. I can't worry about Woking because again, you know, don't, we don't know what's going to happen on on the Friday. We could have injuries and whatever, so all we'll, we'll lose. Train uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and um, you know, prepare to get our team ready to, to go to Eastley and um, and try and get three points, and, and then worry about uh, Woking after that. Yeah, I don't really look too far. You know, things change, players change, get injuries, knocks, and whatever. So just focus on the first game, which is a good Friday at Eastley. Thank you for your time, Zebedee. Right. Cheers, mate. Thanks, mate. Right. Okay, here with uh, Noah Chesmain for Wings TV. Um, Spoke to the gaffer after the game, though. He was bitterly disappointed. He felt we was on top for large parts, especially the first half. Couldn't argue with that, could you? We were we played very well in the first half. Yeah, I would say I felt we started off quite well. That high tempo play was getting the ball moving in tight areas. But I just feel like sometimes we just need to get that final product. Just like getting balls in the box, getting shots off. I think like we don't do that enough. Yeah, it's decision making, isn't it? Yeah. When to shoot, when to pass, and I think you can see that from the stand. So, 
from a player's perspective, you feel that as well, do you, at the moment? What do you put that down to, though? I just think, that as the gaffer says, that like, some people are trying to do things by themselves. Just like little things, just talking, communicating. People should like understand what other people's abilities are, and just be able to like play together. I think team cohesion that's like important if we're playing together. The, the, the manager said there's an anxiousness within the team because we yeah. want to get that first win. To, yeah, exactly. You know that's very much where it comes from. Do you agree? Yeah, definitely. I feel some people want to like play their own game as well and be able to um, just like affect the game really well. So. Sometimes that does mean that we have to do things that we're not meant to do, but that's just the quality that you need. Yeah, it was a bit of bitter blow to concede right on half time as well. What did the manager say at half time? Um, he was just saying to me like um, that I need to like switch on, like not not be able to switch off through games and just be able to get tired to my man. I felt like I didn't do that, and I like, just gave away a silly foul. But like next week if we get a game, then I'll definitely like improve on that. From your own personal point of view, I think for, you know a lot of Wally fans have been very impressed with how you settled into the side, really grown, seen you grow as a player. Do you feel that as well? Were you pleased with your individual performances? Yeah, definitely. Sometimes I feel I should be able to get on more, like as I did at Millwall. But I just think sometimes you just have to like adapt to the way like well in play and just sit off and that. Like, it's just important that I do my defensive job as well. <coughs> What, obviously, we, we, we've dropped further down the table today with 10 points from safety. What's the mood in the camp? Is there a, a people downbeat or are we trying to keep a positive positive spin on it? I think definitely we're trying to keep positive, but it's hard at this stage like where we have to like fight for and like do all the ugly things really well. So just if everyone just keeps going and keep doing things together, then I'm sure we'll get out of it. You enjoying your, your time now at Welling? Yeah, definitely. Um, just playing first team football really like that's just a real privilege. Is it different to the development side of things that you've been experiencing yeah, at Millwall? Definitely. I just I feel I feel more mature. I feel like I've, I'm meeting new people and just meeting new people that's like a hard thing in itself because mm. I'm just around my friends at Millwall. But yeah, yeah. I just think definitely like I just feel like I've grown up a bit more. Excellent. Well, well done and uh, continue uh, continue success at Welling. Thank you. Cheers, Noah. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Cheers.